Now that I've got your attention, hi, welcome to this video on circuit components. Right now you might be wondering, wow, how could you do a video on such a boring topic and expect to get views? Well that's because doing a video on circuit components will help us uncover how complex devices work. Otherwise it would be impossible for me to explain how things like light bulbs, watches, or microwave ovens work. It's kind of like school, you have to learn all the boring stuff before you can learn all the cool stuff. And even then, I still think these components are cool anyway, because I'm a nerd. And now you might be wondering, why isn't this in your previous video about electricity? And the answer is, because I'm bad at video planning. <coughs> also, I'm looking to move forward as a video creator, so if this video gets just 10 likes, I will do a hand review. So the first component that we will talk about are resistors. So this is a resistor. What it does is it releases electrical energy as heat. The lower the resistance, the more heat that is released. Its job is to lower the current drawn by a circuit and to reduce the voltage drop across other components in the circuit. Space heaters and light bulbs are, in fact, just weaker versions of resistors. Now every resistor has a quantity called resistance. This is basically a measure of how well the resistor resists the flow of current through it. The resistance of a resistor is equal to the voltage drop across the resistor divided by the current through the resistor. The international standard measurement for resistance is the ohm. An ohm is, a pro is equivalent to one volt per amp. So this horseshoe looking thing is the symbol for the ohm. So this is a 100 ohm resistor. So let's take this 100 ohm resistor and apply six volts across it with Mr. Battery. Wait, wait, this isn't Mr. Battery. This is Mr. Battery's bigger but weaker cousin. Say hello, Mr. Battery's cousin. No! Okay, fine. Gee. All right, so first I have one side of the resistor connected to the battery, so I'll connect the negative side. six and then ah uh, ah okay there we go all right so now let's find the amount of current through their ah okay so so now let's find the amount of current through this resistor so the voltage across it is six volts and the resistance is 100 ohms so the current in amps is six divided by 100 or 0 0.06 amps now that we know the voltage and current we can find the power or heat energy released per second by the resistor Something that I didn't mention in my last video, which I probably should have mentioned, is that the international standard unit of power is the watt. So to find the power in watts, we take the voltage drop and multiply it by the current. In this case, it would be 6 times 0 0.06 or 0 0.36 watts of power. And despite 0.36 being a small number, it, it has caused the resistor to heat up noticeably. Like, like ah, ah, okay. So... So now instead of 6 volts, let's run 9 volts across the resistor, and to do that we'll use our old friend, Mr. Battery. Jeez, where is he? Oh, oh, there he is. So the amount of current through this resistor will be larger now because we will be using a battery with a higher voltage. So in this case, the voltage across the resistor is 9 volts and the resistance is still 100 ohms. So the current is now 0 0.09 amps. So that now means that the power loss is 9 times 0 0.09 or 0 0.81 watts of power. Once I turn this thing on. Eh. If I connect this. Eh. No. I'm on video. I must do this correctly the first time. Dang it. Oh. Next, we will talk about capacitors. So this is a capacitor. Now, capacitors have many uses, but their main job is to store electrical energy. So, how do capacitors work? Well, they have two metal conducting plates, and when connected to a oh, you can't actually see the conducting plates in here, they're actually really small. But, when connected to a battery, opposite charges accumulate on each side of the capacitor, and then you can connect the two ends to a uh, load, like a light bulb, and then run it. Now, every capacitor has a quality called its capacitance, which measures how effectively it can store electric charge. It is the charge stored by the capacitor divided by the voltage held to get the capacitance. 
And now for my greatest regret from my what is electricity video. I did not mention the international standard unit for electric charge. Why? I don't know. Again, I'm bad at video planning. So the international standard unit for electric charge is the coulomb. It, so the international standard unit for capacitance are farads, which is one coulomb per volt. So this capacitor that I have right here uh, is a uh, 100 microfarad capacitor, which means it can hold 100 millionths of a coulomb per volt supplied. I don't know. Capaci capacitors tend to have really low values for farads, you know. Here, I have Mr. Battery's cousin, and I will charge up the capacitor. Okay, I need to do this correctly. Okay, ah. This one clamp is dumb. Okay, so positive. It says negative, and there we go. Alright, so now it's charging, and disconnect. So now it is charged. It is now charged up to six volts. So the total amount of charge held by the capacitor is 600 microcoulombs. And we can also find the amount of energy held within the capacitor too. Energy is measured in units called joules, by the way. And so the total amount of energy is the coulombs times the volts, or the volts squared times the capacitance, which is 3.6 millijoules, which is a very small amount of energy. So if you need to store a large amount of electrical energy, don't use capacitors, just use rechargeable batteries instead. Now this of course doesn't mean that they're not useful. In fact, they have too many uses to list in this video, so their uses really deserve their own video. Next, I will briefly go over every other circuit component that I have. Look, look at all this stuff, look at it. Look at all that, whoa, look at all that, whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh, so much stuff, where should I even begin, okay. So these right here are batteries. And now, I mean, you all know what batteries are, so, you know. Okay, so now these with IC, music IC, alarm IC, space war IC, and then amplifier IC, oh, and then high frequency IC, U5, upside down, and then recording IC. So IC stands for integrated circuit, and integrated circuits are just special circuits that just do specific things. Like, these all can be, like, hooked up to a, a speaker system, and then they can play music, like, just play sounds and stuff. This right here is used in radios to make the, uh, sound louder, because if there wasn't that in there, then, like, it would be really quiet. And then this just records stuff. Um, and this is also used in radios as well for other things. So, where's that? These are all capacitors. So we have 0 0.02 microfarad, and it goes all the way up to this thick capacitor right here, 470 microfarad. All right, now this is a microphone. This is a photoresistor. It, it increases the resistance the brighter the uh, light on it is. This right here is a relay. It, it's basically a switch that switches on and off really fast when electricity is applied to it. Um, this M2 right here is a um, current meter, so it measures the current through it, and it's an analog meter. There's digital meters too, which I will actually show you later. Then these are all resistors right here. I have the lowest 100 all the way up to 100,000 ohms. Right here, this is an antenna coil, and it picks up radio signals. This right here is a diode. This forces the current going through a wire to only go in one direction. And then these right here are light emitting diodes. So not only do they force the current to go in one direction, but they also emit light. And then S1 and S2, these are both switches. This, you can turn this one on and off. And then this one, to turn it on, you just press it down. And then th these two things right here, L1 and L2, these are both lights, so you can light them up and stuff. And then this right here, WC, this is a whistle chip. So when you apply electrical current across it, it uh, vibrates. Oh, and then oh, I forgot to talk about this. This right here is a. Uh, it's marked. Um, where is it? Okay. Ah, uh, I can't. Ah, uh, okay. So this is marked CV, which stands for variable capacitor. So it actually can change its uh, capacitance by uh, 
rotating this rotating this like wheel thing right here so that has a big use in radios because you can use it to uh, tune it to the station that you want now so now let's move on to the these two q1 and q2 these are both uh re these are both transistors transistors have a uh, three uh what are these even called okay let's not worry about that right now um so you have a um, base collector right here and an emitter right here so it takes in uh, a signal from right here and then depending on how strong that signal is it can let uh, the uh, signal coming from here go over through here so these are actually really important in uh, computers like that because you can uh, extend a voltage to it and it kind of acts like an electronic switch so you can like turn it on and off like one and zero and stuff like that so these are really important in computers and these honestly probably deserve their own video as well and then this right here oh, I gotta take this out too so this is RV which stands for variable resistor now a variable resistor well, it's sim similar to a variable capacitor in that you can change the resistance by moving this back and forth, the slider right here. So, that's good too, because you can use it to like control the volume of a radio or something, or just like tr make a light dimmer or brighter. So that's really important. And then all these blue things on the side, like these are just, these are just like wires that I have. Like they're not like real wires, they're like... Just like metal that just like runs on along it. And you can use these to connect different components, obviously. So next I have this. This is a special kind of transistor. Like this, see? This is a diode symbol right here. So it only forces so it forces current to go in one direction as well. It's pretty complicated though, so it might be too much for right now. Um this right here. M1, which is a uh, motor. It's a uh, DC motor, so it runs on direct current and it spins around really fast. So, all right. Now moving on to here. So right here, this B2 is a solar panel. So you can eat, or no, my bad, solar cell, and you can use it and like put place this under the sun, and then it generates voltage across these two terminals. This right here is an LED display or light emitting diode display. And you can use it to display any number from zero to nine. So, depending on where you hook it up along these terminals. This right here is a thick transformer, right here, T1. So you can hook up a, uh, so here's the input, here's the output, and you can uh, hook up one side here to an AC current, and then out here it'll produce a higher AC current. So that's pretty cool. Now here, this is an FM radio module, so it can pick up FM radio signals. This antenna right here can only pick up AM, but so that's what makes this special. Then right here we have a, a speaker SP. Right here we have an uh, electromagnet, so it can be used to, um, like if you run current through here, it can generate a magnetic field. So that's pretty cool. I mean, technically it can be generated around any wire. It's just that this make makes it stronger. And then this right here is just a uh, fan blade that you can uh, attach to the uh, motor right here. And then this S4 right here is a uh, vibration vibration switch. So this is really cool because if you shake it like this, you can connect the uh, two uh, sides of it and then the switch will turn on. You shake it really fast. Okay. And then... Last, this is a, uh, just anything where you can just place like whatever you want on it because it connects to the uh, circuit. So it's a uh, question one. Um, all right, I believe I went over, over everything in here. Everything in here. Oh, these are really important. These are paper clips. Never forget your paper clips. All right, now. These are just more wires that can actually connect to a computer, and then you can read the um, voltage in there. Now, th these right here, this is a um, car phone charger, and you can plug this into your, uh, like a cigarette lighter, and this will actually generate uh, 
charge that you can charge your phone with. But I mean, you can actually plug this into like anything. Like you can use put a battery on like each terminal, and then you can charge your phone with it. This right here is a digital voltmeter, so you can measure voltage with it uh, and current. Using that, it's not connected to anything. And AC voltage and resistance too. So very important. And this is a compass, so you can I can actually I could actually do a demonstration where I set the compass next to the uh, electromagnet and it turns. But I mean, well, I don't have enough time to do that now. So, yeah, thank you, thank you so much for watching. If you want to watch me shake this vibration switch some more, then be sure to like and subscribe. You know. If you uh, have any feedback to leave in the comments, then please give it because I want to improve my channel as much as I possibly can. And um, yeah, so also if you um, have any video requests and you want to see me do some stuff with uh, this, which I mean I will do in the future, but if you have anything special in mind, then please leave that in the comments down below. So thank you for watching and have a nice day. <laughs>